Welcome to my second video lecture on module 5 PowerPoint. In this uh, video, I'll be giving you the formula you use to construct the confidence interval for a mean of a population. And, and this time, sigma is unknown, which means S has been provided instead of sigma. Now, as I've told you before, when you're trying to construct the confidence interval for the mean of a population or estimate the mean, you use the same formula you used for the sigma known case with the only difference that instead of using z values, you must be using t values, uh, which is just like another z value, but we're not going to get into it at all, into the, what the distribution looks like and all that. So we'll just teach you how to try to figure out what it is when it's given to you. And I've given you the command right below it. So every time I give you a confidence level in any given exercise, Let's say the confidence level, and I'm just going to give an example here, like it's 95%. Then what you would, and, and, and it looks like you need the sample size also. So let's say the sample size is 28. Now, how would you find the T value for this? Well, you'll type, as you see here, T dot inverse dot 2T. So I'll type it here, equals T dot inverse dot 2T. And you have to write two things here. One of them, the first one, I've shown you how to do it. The first one, you do it by doing one minus the confidence level. So if the confidence level is 95%, and you're going to use the decimal version of it, one minus 0.95 is 0.05. So 0.05 is what I would use here. Basically, you're writing the area in two tails is what you're doing. And since 95 is the belly area, then what this... Excel command needs for you to type is to type what's outside the belly. So what's on the both tails, which is, which is always one minus the confidence level, which is 0.05. And then the second number is known as called degrees of freedom. And by definition is N minus one. So if your sample size is 28, then your degrees of freedom will be 27. And that's what you would use to find the required T value to do whatever the problem is uh, giving you values for. So let's move on and see an example done. Uh, here's the first example in a crash test of 1500 Odyssey minivans. Collision repair costs have a normal distribution. Okay, great. The mean repair cost is 1786. Sample standard deviation is 937. And they want us to construct a 99% confidence interval for the mean repair cost of such co collisions. Now, we have two formula for the mean uh, estimation of the mean. One is with the Z, one is with the T. Here you have the sample standard deviation. So you're going to use the one with the T. So it'll be X bar minus T times S over square root of N. And again, you don't need to memorize these because all these formulas have been provided for you. So let's try to figure out what's what so we could figure out the... Uh, so we could figure out the left-hand side or the lower confidence limit or the lower confidence limit and the and the upper side which is the right hand side and is known as the upper confidence limit now here x bar the sample mean is 1786 the sample standard deviation which is s is 937 the sample size is 15 and they want us to construct a 99 percent confidence interval for the mean repair cost of all such collisions. Now, I have all the values I need except my T value. Now, they've given me a 99% confidence level with a 15 sample size. I need to figure out what the T value is for this, and I will show it to you on a spreadsheet. So remember, we have a 99% confidence level, and my, now in order to find the T value, all right, let's go to a new one. If you actually delete this, so let's find the T value here. So the confidence level is 99%, uh, and my sample size is 15. Now, in order for me to find the T value, remember I said you need to know what 1 minus the confidence level is. So I'm going to make that yellow. So in the yellow, I'm going to figure out what I need to type in the T formula. And what I need to type in the T formula is 1 minus the confidence level. Uh, which is 0.01. So now we can type it equals T dot, and it's always inverse as I told you before, to tail, it wants you to type a probability. The probability is what's in yellow, which is 0 0.01. 
and the degrees of freedom is the number of samples one less so it's 15 minus 1 sorry which is which is 14 so that's what you type to find the t value and your t value is 2.97684 and depending on how many decimal places I ask you for, you will just write that many decimal places. So if I ask you for three decimal places, you'll type 2.977, 2.977. 7. So my T value is 2.977. So now I can, I have all the values. I, I Now it's very easy for me to find the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So it would basically be 1786 minus 2.977 times s which is 937 divided by square root of n which is 15 and the other side is the same thing with a plus in between all right and then you just compute the left hand side and compute the right hand side and that's it and that'll be your final answer and i'll show it to you i'll show you how this is done on the next page and i've done it for you here but it's typed instead of handwritten so you figure out what formula to use, you write down the givens, you find what you don't have by using 0.01, which you got from one minus the confidence level, which was one minus 0.99, that's how you got 0.01. And you got 14 from n minus one, which was 15 minus one, which gave you 14. So that's how you found this T value. You plug them in, you do the left-hand side, right-hand side, and there is your answer which is saying, well, I'm 99% confident that the repair cost of all collisions for Honda Odysseys is anywhere from $1,000 to $2,500. And uh, that's how you do it when the pop, that's how you construct the confidence interval for a mean of a population when sigma is unknown. And instead, S is given. Okay, let's look at a similar problem, but slightly different uh, here. You notice they're also asking us to construct the confidence interval for the population mean. And uh, there is nowhere here that it says the population standard deviation is whatever. So obviously here sigma is not given. They're giving you a bunch of data values. So obviously at best we could find is S, which is a sample standard deviation. So obviously for this formula, I mean for this problem, we'll be using this formula for estimating the mean, the T formula. It's quite easy to remember. If you have sigma, you have to use the Z formula. If you have S, you have to use the T formula, that's all. So and you have the formulas in front of you uh, during the homework and during the test. So the question is, construct the confidence interval for the mean, uh, sigma unknown. Now notice we need X bar, we need T, we need S, and we need N. So we need X bar, we need T, we need S and we need N. Now out of these, which ones do we have? Well, we have N. N is 10. So N is 10 right here. What else do we have? Uh, we don't have much else. We don't have X bar and S and T. Well, T we're going to find with the Excel command, but X bar and S we're going to find using the data. If you recall, you're going to have to type all this on Excel and use the average and the stdv command to find the sample mean, which is x bar, and the sample standard deviation, which is s. But the problem is that if you calculate these and then write them out, you'd kind of wonder how many of these decimal places you should carry, because if you carry just eight, then and then carry eight, seven, and then carry eight, seven, six, every time you carry a different number of decimal places, the final answer will be different. So to be consistent, and so for all students in the same given problem to have the same answer, then what I would recommend you do is to not write these numbers, just calculate them on Excel and click on them if you need to use them to compute, to compute the estimation. Uh, and I'll tell you what I mean when I actually do it on a spreadsheet for you. So basically we need to find X bar using the commands, which is 147,000. Uh, then we'll find sample standard deviation, which is 91,000 change. N is 10, and the t-value will be equals to norm dot, uh, sorry, t dot in dot two tail, same command, one minus the confidence level. Here, the confidence level isn't given, and uh, in the introduction, I told you guys that even a problem of confidence 
level isn't given, you always assume it to be 95%. The industry standard confidence level is 95%. So if you don't mention what the confidence level is, you have to assume it to be 95%. So let's uh, take these values and let's do this out. So let me show you how this is done on Excel. And remember, um, here are the numbers in reality, and here is going to be the formula. So you just plug in whatever X bar is, 147,000. I'll show you how to find a T value, but let's say it's 2.262 if you use three decimal places. N is 10, so that's all good. The thing is that for S, you have to write 91687 point, and here we don't know how many decimal places to carry. Uh, so, and you give instructions and people miss it or don't use the right number of decimal places, so everybody gets the different answer. So it's a better idea not to type this number and just click on its location when you're doing this on, uh, on, a, on a spreadsheet. And I'll show you what I mean right now. And then the same thing, you would actually copy the rest of them on the other side. And it'll be the same thing. Uh, but this is obviously a problem that I wouldn't even do with pencil and paper. I'll just do this on Excel and uh, type it all out. Because ultimately, remember, all I need you to tell me is what's the left-hand side, what's the right-hand side. I'm just looking for two numbers. So this is much easier not to even bother writing anything with pencil and paper. It's easier to just go to Excel and do it out. I've taken the liberty of typing the numbers, so I don't have to take a long time typing them. So my sample size is 10. My uh, X bar, I need X bar, I need S, and I need a T value, right? And then once I have that, and then I can find my, actually I can just use these. I can find my lower and upper confidence limits. So here, so my X bar will be, I can just do it here. So lower confidence limit, upper confidence limit. So let's see. My X bar will be the average of my numbers. So you just select them all, my average. My standard sample standard deviation, or S, S, T, B, E, V. Uh, again, I select the numbers. There we go. And the T value is, remember the confidence level is 95%. So one minus, and so you would write uh, T dot inverse to tail, right? For probability, we write one minus the confidence level. So if the confidence level is 95% here, 0.95, one minus 0.95 will be 0.05. And for the degrees of freedom, remember it's N minus one here, N is 10, so it'll be nine. 10 minus one is nine, so there's your T value. All right, and uh, let's say I ask you to use uh, three decimal places. For, for T, I have to tell you how many decimal places to use. So let's say we go with 2.262, 2.262. Uh, now the lower confidence limit will be equal to X bar, sorry, minus the T value times S divide by the square root of and there is my lower control limit, class limit. The upper class limit will be X bar, again, but this time plus instead of a minus, times the plus T times the standard sample standard deviation divided by the square root of N. And that's how you calculate the upper class limit. So my lower class limit is 81,000, my upper class limit is 212,000. And then depending on how many decimal places I ask you for, you'll just do that because uh, usually numbers of this magnitude will probably ask you to round the numbers to the nearest whole number. So you probably write 81,415 and 212,584. And if you go back to our spreadsheet, you'll see if I refer, I've done it here, see? I've, I've written it out, but it basically ends up being the same value here if I round it to the nearest whole number. Thank you. See you on the next video.